Hey there. I'm hoping this is live. I haven't done this in a while, so I'm definitely recording, so it'll be up on my YouTube channel at some point. All right, this is Decker. Rather, this is Decker. Looking at a picture of the screen here. So this is Decker up here. Decker is like a modern hypercard. This is a website dedicated to Decker. Beyondloom.com Decker. And there's your little overview of it. If you want to follow along, this is where you can get it. You can actually click right here and actually play with Decker in your your browser and get a little tour and you just say Decker file new deck discard everything and just get you to the point where I'm at actually what I did have done is I've started making sounds and they said new sounds and I said record and la 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 there's some sounds and then you play it back la 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 all right and um, what I did is I have a piano next to me and I made some songs sounds that uh, represent the notes of a piano these are just temporary I'm just trying to Something working. I'm actually going to generate the sound. That's great. Anyway, that's Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, the alphabet song, and Baba Black Sheep, whatever you want. So these are the sounds that are stored in the deck. And I said Decker file save as. I'm not sure if, I think if you do that from the web version, you get a HTML file. Anyway, I saved it as a .deck file on my computer, which is a kind of text format. Anyway, so you can, this is all part of a thing for Decktember. Decktember is a, a a Decker jam, or I don't know if it's not a game jam, it's just a thing jam. Make something with Decker and see what you can do. Internet janitor John Ernest is a friend of mine, and I agreed to take part. So I'm doing something. So this is this is my attempt to make something with Decker. So in the in the in the documentation, which is excellent, there is a section on the sound interface, and the sound lets you create sounds by hand. And this would allow you to create a new a, a song, a, a sound that represents the note A. So something similar to the one I did. But um, let's first, let's just make a, I call this piano, let's just make something. So the idea is first I'm gonna put it in full screen mode and then I'm gonna go down here and I'm just gonna use my, my pen here. I don't know why I like that, because it's not really optimized for pen use, but I'm gonna put some buttons here and I'm just gonna put a button for each one of those things. I guess if you press enter, you get, get, the, uh, get the properties. The button for that is nice. And we can just say action, play a sound, and we choose a sound and I'm... Okay, so in theory, I don't want it to go to a card, I just want to stay on the current card and click play a sound. Oh, that's interesting. I'm able to double click it with the mouse. I can't double click it with my pen. I just filed like a little bug reporter there saying I really wish you could do that. That's interesting. Okay, anyway, let's see. Should be the name. I guess you gotta put text on there. That's what I'm missing here. That's really gonna screw me up if I'm looking at the copy of this thing in OBS. But let's go text. Okay. And then let's make it all right, so now. So now let's just test it. So we go back to this mode right here, which is um, interaction mode. We can go to interact mode, uh, and then we click on this, and we should get a sound. Yeah. All right. So tool widgets, and I think I can copy this widgets tool edit copy widgets edit paste widgets. And so now, how about we just call this button D? We'll call that D, and then the action will be that. But to play a sound, choose okay. Okay, and we should probably call this button C. Okay. Yeah, this is the painful way to do this, but we're gonna do it just to get this working. Our, <coughs> excuse me. Copy widgets, edit, paste widgets. All right, there's only eight of them, so let's copy this again. Edit, copy widgets, edit, paste widgets. That should be, are there eight of them in an octave or are there nine? CD, we'll call that button E. We'll find out. I think there's eight. Eight in an octave, so seven notes plus the copy of the C. C D E and F. And I didn't pick action for that. Let's see what it does. So F. <coughs> Excuse me. Action. Okay. Okay. C D E F G. Button G. Label is G. Action is play a sound. No go to card. Choose a sound. G. Okay. C D E F G. And then this is the ABC, which is how pianos work, or how the musical scale works on a piano. If you want all the white keys, then you use the C scale. Action. Play a sound. Choose A. Okay. Okay. And B. B. Action. Play a sound. Okay. And then C. C to a C. Action. Or play a sound. Choose. Okay. So we should get a scale here. Oh, there's a pair on there. Where'd my uh, thing go here? That worked, okay. All right, so now uh, we've got our little piano keyboard here, but we wanna play something else. So let's play, let's see what happens if we follow the instructions here. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
All right, so the following example creates a new sound and then writes a one second long sine wave to it. All right, so S is a sound, sound is a constructor. Make a new sound from scratch. They're 8 bit, 8 kilohertz monophon waveform samples. So it's 8K per second. 8 kilohertz is 1,000 per second. So then we have a sine wave. This is the frequency. So we take the base rate of 440 divided by 8,000, 2 because I guess it's a speed oscillation is 2. And then the 16 has got to be the uh, volume. All right, so then this, and this would make a one second, yeah, a, a one second A. And so then if we want the frequency for the other notes, I'm just going to look them up in the note. Frequency, frequency for notes in the scale. I know that those are not exactly integers, right? What is this telling me? Is it? Yeah, the equal temper temperature scale. I think it's like so. Yeah, the twelfth root of two. The number by which one two. Okay, Decker is made with a language called Lil. So, where do I find about Lil? Lil programming language. Can I open that up. No, that's not what I want. I want like a reference. No, where you put your contents? Okay. All right. So I've actually forgotten why I wanted to. This is a very tiny language. This is a. That's the grammar of the language. It's very, very tiny. I'm looking for square root or root. Root power. Oh, I have square root. I don't know if I have another root. This is a brand new language. You might not have such a hmm. Exponent. Exponent. Okay. I feel like I can do this with exponent. Uh, exponent to root. Yes. E to the five six. What is I think exp is the exponent. Let's see what XP. Okay, every time I've worked in, in Decker before, I've had the author, John, working with me. It's a listener. Oh, and I'm writing away on it. Let's see what I can do about it. I'll just move over here. I think that's going to put a big black line right on the left. I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to deal with that. Yep, I got a black line there. Yeah, I can fiddle with my settings real quick and just. I don't know what's causing that. But I'm going to transform. I think I can just crop the pixel. There we go. Okay. OBS. Okay. All right, so exp, exp, and shift enter gives me a number. Can I do 10 exp 20? Dang it, John. You know what I could do? All right, first of all, let's just do, get this working. Let's get this working, right? All right, what's this? That's, yeah, this is like e to the something, right? e is equal to exp1, right? Is that e, right? e. Is that e? Yeah. e times e. Seven, so e two is going to be exp two is going to be that number. Yeah, okay. So that's what that's what. So it's, it's e to the something. But if I just want two to the if I say one over twelve, it gives me the number. So two to the one over twelve is that number. All right. So I actually can do this. Okay. So I just I I was looking for this. I didn't realize I I could do that with that. So I don't need any of this need that anymore. I don't really need this anymore. Okay. So this is what I'm looking for. F0 times, right, so F0 would be A. Yeah, A4 is 440 hertz. Right, so I, I should be able to multiply by this and get and get the number. All right, so what I'm going to do, first of all, let's just make a new button that is going to play this new sound tool. All right, OK, so my question, though, is how do I play the sound? I know how to play this sound, because this sound has a name, and it's saved in this collection right, right here, this collection of sounds. But how do I make a new sound in that collection? Let's go back to the listener and let's try, let's try this example. Yeah. The play function can play a sound, so I don't have to pass it by name. Oh yeah, so when I click these buttons in, in, in widget mode, uh, and I went to the properties, and these, I went to the action button, and it generated the script for me, unclick to play app. So what I want to do is make a new button that does something like this. So let's go back here. We're going to copy this widget. Rather, we're going to edit, copy widgets. Edit paste widgets, and we're gonna call this. Oops, double click on this, and we're gonna call this uh, generate gen generate an A. Okay, we'll generate the A sound. It might be an octave high or low or whatever. <clears throat> All right, and so now I'm thinking this. I'm thinking the script is already generated for me because I copied it. Yes, so play C. So I'm gonna call this S. So sound. I'll click to, and I'm gonna create this. Run the script that we have here. So. Copying this example script, paste it in. It worked. Okay. A little worried. Hey, copy and paste didn't work here, but it does. So that's impressive. All right. All right. So each X in range S size. Right. So that's eight thousand. 
that's going to give me the original number. So that's my A, right? So let's play that. Let's make sure that works. I think I just press escape. Yeah. All right. And I go back to this mode. That's pretty close. And then let's edit. I can press control E to get the script. Let's put that as a shortcut. Sure. And then there's this thing called x-ray spec. You can click on, I see, control click on, on the, this gives you your kind of messy ugly there. Kind of hard to see that, but I guess I could move them over. So let's put that here. Let's uh, go into button mode here, here. That way my script won't get in the way. I can use it. Okay, so control R, nope, this mode first, control R, control E, and then control R. Okay, and then we're gonna go click on this. All right, so play S, and I want our volume. So V is, let's call this V is 24. We'll call it ball. Is that a comment? I think it's a comment. We'll try it. We'll see what happens. All right, in OBS, that goes to a particular spot on, there's like a volume bar and it goes to 3200. I'm going to change that. So hit Control E, Control E. Not E, because that's like where I keep it. So, control. so now if I change that to 50, that was a comment. All right, now that goes from instead of negative 32, it went to negative 27 or whatever. Either way, it's. Negative, if you keep doing it, they play over each other. Interesting. Okay, so that's <clears throat> that is my volume control, correct? So let's do that again. Control E, click on that, and let's put that up to 100. If it's 250, I bet it's 128. I bet 127 is the max volume. I'm gonna, oh, okay. The end key does not do what I want in this editor. Volume 0 to 127. That's a guess. I don't know if that's true or not. Checker. That's pretty loud. Now I'm going to try it at a zero or something. See if that's actually the way. See if it goes any higher. Let's do 130. Yeah. So it's 128. And then if you go higher, it's getting higher. Okay. So that's an oops. Yeah, I probably should save this file. Save. Oh. File. I think it says auto save, right? It's an auto save. All right. So control E. Click on that. And then we're going to put this at 127. All right, let's go ahead and, and change that a little bit. Let's say B is volume, how about volume slider value. And we'll make a slider. So a slider is a type of widget. So we go in widget mode, widget, new slider. We'll call it volume slider. And the min is zero and the max is 128. It can be horizontal. Let's make it compact. I don't know what that does. See what that does. Put a volume in there. And I think if we go back to this mode, and yeah, then we can go all the way 128. So if we do this, 128 is too high. Edit. Did I say 128? I did. 127. Okay. And then back to this mode. That's pretty cool. So the idea in Decker, I guess the fundamental rule of Decker is that any kind of persistent data exists in a widget. So a number would map to a slider, a string maps to a text box, and so on. And so your data is actually stored in your card. Every time the Hard refreshes basically you're getting a brand new like environment and you are able to pull data in from the card but there's there's no we, unless you use a special escape hatch called the module there's no persistent data on a card basically uh, other than what's what's visible in a widget so all your data is visible all your state is visible and you don't have to keep track of it in your head you can always see what's going on a script is not state a script is a script okay all right all right, so now we got to pick the, the, the note. I think what I'm going to do is make a series of checkboxes. So tool widgets, and then the widget I want is a, let's think about this for a minute. I mean, one thing I could do is just pre-compute all the notes. Hmm, how do you edit a table? Grid overlay is not this kind of, grid. it's not a grid widget. This is a properties. No, I don't want to click row. There's a way to do this. Interact maybe. Cool. Copy table, add row, or table. Yes. Select. All right. So you you can select. Let's let's. Uh, I want C. Right. I want to start with C. C D E F G A B C. And I'm gonna call this like C. Well, we'll do that. Okay. We can edit this table. Right. Select. I think we say each. I think we can call this note. Note. Select note. Yes. Note. So as we say select each note. From is a keyword and cannot be used for a variable name. Each from. All right, all right, we got to look at this now. I'm going to keep this up and I'm going to just make a copy of this browser tab and find the oh, grid interface, right? 
No, that's the widget. I want I want the actual table. So this would be the select. I want I want something in the will little program. I probably have open. John, you need the titles on your pages. <laughs> I'm assuming John's gonna watch this. I think that's arrogant of me, but I really want. Okay, so what am I looking for? I'm looking for select so query, query, so the query language. Okay, I'm pretty sure there's a way to get uh, to do what I want to do. I can't just make a list. This is. A, I, I'm pretty sure there's a way to do it. So I'm being stubborn here. And I, I remember we've a, I've asked him this question before. Like, how do you do this? Because I'm always trying to do something concise. I'm pretty sure. So this is just like a. This is me being. A, so it's not each, each note. I want to say note dot value. Yes, select value from. I wonder if I can just do this. Yeah, you could just. I could have just done that. All right. Hello, and now you get all the letters. Okay, because that because because the Lil's type system is very very forgiving, and it will cast pretty much anything into anything. So if you want to use a string as a table, you can just do that. So that, that's that, that's the way to do it. A, a, a B C D E F. That's what I want C right. C D E F G. A, B, C. All right, and now I want to say two, each two, right? Each, I want to say C4, D4, and so on, right? Accepted name, but found string, not each. Yes, but that's not what I want. I want, so operator. I'm, I'm, we, I'm, I'm expecting this to work like A a little bit, but it doesn't. So let me think about that. Cross, no. Each X in two cross three, no. Each X in, um, I have the pieces to do this. I want to put it, I basically want to say C4, D4, E4, and so on. I want to make those numbers. Oh, actually, hang on, let's see. Each, why am I, why am I thinking each? each? What does each do? I really want this, like cross, cross. Yeah, that's it. And I think if I give this a name, note, will that work? No, no. Yeah, how do I make that? Now I've got a value. So go back to the query language part, select, I want to say select. Oh, we could say, how do we just get a range? I know you can say in 10, each one in 10. Range, count. Okay, so if I just say count of eight, right? No, 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 no. I want to say uh, each eight, no, select. How do I, how, I was just doing that. I was just seeing that, how it's cross. You, say, you can't say list eight. You know, if you say each I in eight, that should come on. Range. Oh, let's say range eight. <laughs> okay. So I want the numbers, these numbers, I guess. Okay. So range eight cross whatever I just had before. No, not cross. Yeah. We want to start with eight. Let's call it A, B, C, D, E, F, G cross two. That actually gives what I want. Cross is not the right word for it. Maybe this? No. no. That's actually what I want. Select from A, B, so index count value so we just give it names okay so select index note and the note is the value from that should do it but where is my no comma no comma no comma yeah okay so index note i'm just gonna call it i oh i index i gets the index note gets the value from a b c d e cross two except i wanted four right i'm just arbitrarily calling this note a4. I'm going to keep this like in a little notepad or something here just so I can remember what I did. Otherwise, I'm going to lose it as soon as I did this. Let's see. Let me go to uh, one note or something. Off screen on the Decker notes. Actually, I have, yeah, Decker notes. And in Decker feedback, I had a separate one for that. What was this feedback I want to say? Oh, the help pages need titles so you can see them. And the little, you can distinguish them. Those uh, are tabs. And Lil, uh, Lil, the, the language help page should have a table of contents. Should, could really use a table of contents. Really use table of contents. <clears throat> I bullied him into giving me one for the, uh, the other the other page. I think the, the Decker reference has a table of contents, but not the Lil. Yeah. The Decker reference may have that. Has this table of contents at the top. Lil does not. Okay, all right. So then I wanted to just copy this. I think I just did, but let me just double check. Your notes. Yeah. Okay. Maybe I'll put this down here. So share my notes. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So now I've got my table. I can just hit the I've got apply and run. I think if I hit apply, I'm going to, my table is actually going to have this data. Okay. Is it that it's too small? Yes. Six. CFG. All right. So I'm going to, all right. So widgets. 
I can just add it somehow here. Cool. Edit add row. Okay. Ooh, add it at the top. That's not what I want. I don't know. Let's see. Seven. I'm going to put seven in that cell. Okay, can I sort by it? Yeah, so now I can just sort by that. Interesting. Okay. And the new value for that, that's going to be a five. All right, so now, actually, this is my piano. All right, so that, edit, file. So what I want to do here, I want to copy this script because I've got this script here. Copy. And I'm just going to go ahead and go to the grid. I'll click row. Do this. So now when I click a row, I don't know how to see what row is. I could look in the docs, but rather than do that, I'm going to say the bug value is equal to row. And then that should take... Assuming I have a, a widget called field, called debug, then the text code should be equal, should should tell me what I get there. So whatever I get, so if I go here, so it's giving me the row number. And then from that, I can inspect the card and I'll probably inspect me, uh, the script. Right, so I bet if I do here, let's put row comma e, row comma me. And now if I do this, I should get, what am I doing? I'm Oh, that's open. I'm, I'm, I'm clicking. I've got a Dvorak keyboard, so when I hit Control S, I'm getting open. And then, or Control O is open, and right next to that is Control E. Uh, so this is. I'm going to put me. Is me a keyword? I think it's just grid one. I would just say grid one. But I think me is like special. I think me is a special name. All right, let's see if I just say grid one. Okay, so it's just not, just not converting into a string. All right, so Control E on this and it would say oh and then row. I think that'll make a string I'm not sure it's either gonna make a list or it's gonna make a list or a string a list of two items or a string I think it I think it makes a, a tuple because he didn't want strings all right so now I can use this number to cool widgets get rid of this and now we can use this number this number I to edit hard my different script Script for this. All right, so now at 440. Okay, let's do, let's do call it freak. Call it the HZ. Move this up here. So it's going to be 440. Plus, I'm going to use this little formula on that page. That 440 times, yeah, times a to the n. Times a to the n, where n is the row. And then so we we'll call step to the row. Now let's call n. We can adjust that later. N is the row. Index of the row equals, say, B equals 440. Base frequency. So we'll say B plus step. Now we could call A because it's actually an A. Call S0. Right, we'll call A. We'll call A4. I don't, I don't know if that's actually A4. Base frequency A4. Meaning like octave 4. I don't know if that's actually the number. Maybe that's not the right number. I'm just calling it 4 arbitrarily. So A4 times and little executes right to left so there's no order, worrying about the order of operations here this is going to execute first then multiply by this not because it's a my dear aunt sally or whatever pem, pembis or whatever pem, pemdas right parentheses exponent exponentiation multiplication division yeah the, this is just right to left except for parentheses so a times step to the end and then a step is going to be Step is going to be two to the, the one over the one twelve, and then that to the zero with power is going to be zero. So yes, this should just work. This should just be a piano now. All right. So if I if I do if that's true, it should be a piano. But I don't have sharps and flats in here, and it's, we divided by twelve instead of by eight. So this is going to this is going to be completely wrong. But but it should it should play different notes. Uh, so back in this mode. All right. So that's A four. Uh, got my piano here. <laughs> I'm just looking at the piano to see. Okay, so we got A, B flat. All right, so I'm, I'm gonna just have to do this. So this is actually B flat, B, call it B minus B. What's the, what's the notation? I don't wanna use this lowercase b, do I? Or maybe lowercase b is flat. B, maybe I'll just put a B after it, B, B flat. B. Let's see what ASCII, ASCII music notation. There's different kinds of those. What's ASCII? What's that? How do they use a flat? Here's D flat. Oh, okay. So they use sharp and flat. And so at sign is flat. At flat. Okay. B of four. Let's do that. Let's copy masking. Whatever masking is. All right. So that's B flat. So we start with A. B. All right. So this is going to be B. Yeah, that's B. All right. So that's 
v4. So all that work I did to generate that table is silly now. All right, so that's b4, and then we have c4, c4, okay. And then we have c sharp, or e flat, or uh, e flat, we call it c sharp. I think it's e flat now. Uh, e flat, not e flat, four, e4. All right, so we got f, so let's see. Now we gotta add more numbers to it. So, so file, edit, add row, edit, add row, edit, add row, edit, add row. I think we can erase this column because we're not actually looking at this column. But I'm just using it to sort now. So this is 11. And then, oh, now if we sort, is it gonna be alphabetical or is it gonna be, mm-hmm. So we have to put this as zero, zero. Zero, one, zero, two, oops. There's no way to, oh, 05, oh, 06, oh, 07, oh, 09. Okay. And now we can sort this by that and see what we have now. All right, so that was E4 and F, F, oops, F4. All right, so we had, we had E flat, E4, E flat 4, E4, F4. F sharp or G flat. So F sharp, we call it F sharp. F sharp, F sharp four. And then G and then A flat. G four and A at four. A flat four. And then so then we need one more. Was that A flat four? I think that's A flat five, right? Or if it starts at, wait, that's, it would be B flat. Wait, wait, hang on a second. G four. D E F G. G sharp? Do we say G sharp? No, we say A flat. I, I would think that's A. Uh, we call G sharp. We're starting with. G. Yeah, that's why you start with C. That's why you start with C. Right, we'll, we'll call it A flat five. A at five. Okay. Doesn't matter. We're not using the strings in any way. And then we need one more row. File. Edit. Edit. No, not widget mode. Edit. No. What did I do? here and I say now now I say add row edit add row we we'll put it on the bottom here yeah. okay so I could have just done that from the start so 12 goes here and then the value is gonna be a5 right so I just go all the way to C yeah I'll go all the way to C all right, so we'll make my piano go all the way to C file edit add row that's B flat edit add row I move it to the top 15 B B flat, B at five, okay. Yeah, same thing as here. So I'm copying this, I'm changing five. And then B five is 14, and that would be B five, 14, add row. 14 is, so now I say C. All right, let's start play it. So that's twinkle twinkle. Okay, right, just, just as a sanity check here, let's see. So C, a little out. Okay, so now let's, I'm tempted to like draw a piano. What else would I want to do? I want to draw like a so auto saving all this. Auto save, just save as. Interesting. I don't know why this doesn't double click. Maybe I'm not doing it fast enough. No, you can. You just have to do it fast enough. All right. Okay. So there's probably just something wrong with my tablet configuration here. Not registering it as a double click fast. No, I'll fiddle, fiddle with that some other time. All right. So what do I do now? Let's put some labels on this stuff. So tool. Let's make a widget. Widget new view. These are. Actual samples, actual samples from piano, actual piano samples. So samples. And we don't need a border on it. And we can lock it somehow. Left, center, align, right. I don't need the word actual. And then see what we can do here. So grid overlay, like one little. All right. So this is what I guess we call a synthesizer. So let's put a text up here. Synthesizer. There used to be. A, isn't there some way to make a font? Change your font? There's all these fonts built into it. How do you change the font? I don't have any fonts. No fonts built in. Use current 1.6 samples. Oh, that's new. I haven't seen public transit. Now, how do you change the font? Card properties. Oh, that's card properties. I want widget font. Widget font. Okay. Oh, there was one. Oh, no. Anyway, so I added text. Okay, so since that, I could have done the font thing all along, but I only would have been able to pick from those three. I think it's code and okay. 
All right, so since it synthesized the file, okay. All right, I don't need this piano in my lap anymore. All right, so for the sequencer part, this could actually become part of the sequencer or a primitive sequencer. Like I'm thinking, like, like probably, I just need this list of notes. Mm -hmm. Let's see, let's see what we can do here. All right, so instead of debug, let's just add the note. So Control L to get the listener up. Whoops, not while you're in it. First of all, not while you're in OBS, but while you're in Decker. It's easier to just click on that than to find my mouse. I see three copies of this window. All right, so Control L. All right, so this should be grid one, right? That should be in scope. Yes, yes, it is a grid. So you can't see it, but it's a grid. Okay, maybe I'll move. Where can I move my head? Maybe up here somewhere. I think this is going to keep growing, but we'll see. All right, no, no. Okay, so that's that's okay. That's where the that's where my head can go. Okay, so grid one is the name of this widget. You see, it says grid one right Not there. Right, so it's grid one right there. So I know that's grid one. And then I think I want to say grid one table. Zero, no, grid one data. Grid one dot, it's grid one dot value probably. Is a table, yeah, okay, that is a table. Grid one dot value, and then I say, oh, look at that, that's is A4. Interesting, so that would, that actually has been stored as a, as a number this whole time. As a tuple this whole time, it's just displaying as that. Okay, that's actually good to know. Hmm. I don't know how to get I don't know how to get this information from it because if I, it doesn't matter. Let's just start, let's just start with this grid one value is and then we subscript that at two and then that should give us zero two and b four right i is okay yeah and then we click on this and you say dot note All right so we're gonna take this that's interesting can I not copy and paste this is this where I'm okay copy and paste works there All right so control e to get my script. This one, I'm gonna turn this off for now. It's kind of annoying now. It'd be nice to have those rigged up to buttons. I'm, now my head is floating in the middle of whatever. We'll put it back in a bit. So what was I gonna do? So instead of debug row, let's call it the value. And I, let's see if we have augmented assignment. Let's just try it. And we're gonna paste that in and put in row and uh, no. Let's see if that works. I think it said it didn't work. The current script contains errors. Expected name, but found. You wish to discard your changes. Okay, so that's a bug. Oh, okay, so I'm getting, I'm getting, at least I'm getting this time here. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a note of that for John. Just in feedback here. Expected, so I had a syntax error. When pressing escape, escape on a script dismisses the error dialog without, before I can, before I can read it. I think it's just registering as two, two, two presses. It needs to do it on two different frames. Okay. Oh, hey, coffee before code. Sorry, I didn't see you. I, you know, I, I put this on users in chat to see who was in the chat. No, I see there's five, one, two, three, four, five people in here. Wow. Okay. It doesn't refresh. So I didn't know there was anyone in the chat. Sorry, guys. Hello, everyone. Feel free to ask any questions if you, if you have any. I'm just playing around with this thing. Okay. All right. Did this work? No, it didn't work because something, because augmented assignment does not work that way. I'm guessing. Yep. This language is inspired by K and K would allow you to do like, this is like a plus equals and a comma equals. So, but debug dot value is equal to debug dot value, comma, grid dot value. Know. And maybe, can I just do this? So let's if I say ABC, one, two, three. This is not how you concatenate strings. So how do you concatenate strings? Plus, I think it's concat, nope. All right, let's find in the docs what the word is. So many windows open, I can't, oh. Decker, a multimedia sketch pad. We want Decker. No, I want Lil, right? All right, at. Fuse. Note that using this on the list. So how do you concatenate? Could be Fuse. Inversely combines the strings in the list Y with the string X, resulting in a string. I bet, I bet it's Fuse. Or this is gonna say A123, B123. Yeah, that's not what I want. Oh, backwards, so one, one ABC, two ABC. That's, that's not what I want. Join? No. The natural join. We could say fuse ABC one two three. That'll work, right? Yeah, but that's not what I want to do. There's got to be a better way to do that. Let me move my head. I'll just make myself smaller. So. Little tiny me in the corner. Oh, okay. Format. All right, so what does format do? Format is like a really powerful thing that you could pass in two strings. Right, so this is actually how you do it. So it's either that or you say. Hmm? I'll maybe put the comma there. Yeah, so that could do it, or, hmm, 
All right. I'm not thrilled with that <laughs> lack of a concatenation operator for, okay, whatever. I can get by. I fix my little head here. Uh, okay, so that's just how it's going to be. All right, so oh, I'm done here. All right, so in that case, what I want is to use debug.value, grid.value. Although, I think the value is always going to be converted to a string for this, so maybe that is not actually important. Maybe this is. Let's just try this. I think. I, I think I, I did all of that research just to avoid making a list, but I think the list is always going to be a string. I think that's the idea of a. I think so. Let's say test, and we say that did not work the way I expected it to work. And, all right, so the bug value is equal to. Right, we do have to do that. Fuse. All right, so now. Ah, text. I see. So debug.text. Mm, yeah, that's it. Okay. That's the problem because we have fonts and all that stuff. So tool, edit. Really wish there was a way to like just jump to that script. And nope. Yeah, so I really have to. Yeah, so now it just makes me want to move all this stuff over here. There's probably a better workflow for this. I'm, I'm, but I'm just move all this stuff over here on this side so I, I don't interfere with my script. Tell me what I'm doing wrong here or what you would do better here. All right, all right, so now it's still hard to read, but yeah, okay. I think now we say debug.txt is going to force it to be a string, and we don't need this fuse. That value that note, and we'll call that sequencer and get rid of this comment. Yep, yeah, we need a space. Oh, so we gotta go to widget mode, otherwise, you know, it'd be nice to have a button that takes you to your last script. Hmm, I'm thinking if I can make that a macro, I can't because the location of the grid is always going to change. All right, well, it doesn't matter. Let's see, that's too hard to read. In row index of the row equals number of steps up from base frequency up. From base frequency. Oh, I was going to name, I was going to change the sequencer. So we'll call this sequence.txt is equal to sequence.txt and with a space and grid note. Okay, I'm going to just move this here. Uh, and then uh, draw, the, draw that out and we'll call that sequence. So SEQ. Right. Is it worth editing that? Here's the other way we can do it car tool. I see the properties. Okay, R. Okay. I wonder if you can just click on it and then say R. Yeah, okay. And uh, not when you're in widget mode, right? Or not when you're in interactive mode. So let's put this in uh, when. No, I think it's I think it's if is the most of the word. It's if down here. If is the keyword. If but else is option. Okay, so if and okay. If sequence.txt zero is equal to sequence.txt equals Drop one, one drop cat. Yeah, one. That's why you can't drag and drop. All right, so that's one way to get rid of that annoying thing. So the very first time, I really could just trim all the white space. I'll go to script, and if we have a bunch of stuff up here, whoops, here. Now it trims it. All right, so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get something to replay that. All right, like really, this is this is this is a user interface phase component, but it's also just a piece of data. Right? And so what I want to do is I want to, I want to select from there. Yeah, I, I think what I, I okay, so I, I think the way to run a query on this, let's, 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 let's click on this table, card, query table. So control U is the way to do that. Okay. All right, me value. Now me is it. Now me, me is the keyword. Me, me is just the word in here, not in the, in the event handler, I think. Or maybe it is, I don't know. Maybe event handler is, no, it doesn't matter. I don't, I don't need to check that one. Note, okay, where note, I don't think this is how equality works. Let's see. Where is a keyword and cannot be used for a variable name? Me value. All right, let's see how selection works again. Where you select, oh, select where from. All right, so really I can say index, right? Select index where note equals A4 from me that value. And we even want to say extract. So extract gives you, if you have a single value like this, you can say extract index where note equals for me value. You don't want to apply that because that would lose all our data. That's actually dangerous. So now if I say this down in the listener, except it's not me, it's move my head. <laughs> and then of course, I think I can lock this. Is that, see, it's moving the whole background like that. I, don't know. I think I can lock this. Oh, no. Lock preview. Yeah, there we go. Now I can only just not lock preview. I want to lock this one widget. <laughs> no, not the drawing cam. But yeah, this is, yeah, drawing cam is the background. Okay, okay. So now I can just take this and move this where I want. Okay, now I want to move my head back to up here. And let's see. 
Oh, see, then I should probably just put it back down here. And then the next time I want to do that, I press transition again. Oh, but then, uh, yeah, I didn't. It's not switching back and forth unless you just get it. All right, well, that's something to think about. Okay, if I were doing this all the time, I might I might make this like a scene in, in OBS sort of pixel perfect. Not important at all. Okay, this is, this is actually what I want to run, except I want to say uh, grid one. Yeah, zero. And, and then if I say A5, then that should be the last. Or if I say A at four, that should be, ooh, back index. All right, so A at four, A, A5 is probably my problem, right? That, that's, that's the problem. But then there was that thing where, all right, so grid one, that value has some weird notes in it. So what about A4? So A4 here, I think is not gonna show up, right? Or will it? It does, but, but, it, but if, you, if you said it's gonna give you zero too. Right? Not because it's line zero, but because it wasn't found. So the, the zero is a not found condition. Mm, it's a not found. Okay. That's fine. So long as these are, are actually, let's see. I'm trying to see, can I, I can't. Listener, control L. All right. So I want to see this, but I want to see more of this. So let's say drop, oh, let's say two drop, and then that should scroll it up a little bit. Yeah. Okay. So then 14 rows. So if I said five drop, okay. And if I say, Nine drop, you get five. Say, yeah, okay, so now we're seeing the whole thing. So there, there were no other special cases where it wasn't, where it wasn't a value. And I think if I just fix this, right? And I say A4, now it's gonna be a string. And then I do this again, I should see A4 here as a string, not a. Okay, so that was some artifact of the cross I did like ages ago. Yeah, if you do it in here, you're gonna get this little widget if you do it in the REPL, but if you do it in the, yeah, interesting. So where, where's my original string, right? If I do this, checker notes, checker notes, checker notes. Ah, too many copies of the thing. All right, so too many copies of the window. All right, so here, yeah, see, now I'm getting it like that. But if, but when I did it in the, if I do here, I do control U, and I put, place that same thing in there, it appears to be text, even though it's actually, I wonder if that's a bug. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I don't know if that's a bug or not. I'll talk to John about that because that's, that's an interesting, interesting question. So I'm gonna say, no, John, you'll probably see this, but I don't know if I'll, if, you're, if I'll talk to you before that. So I'll, I'll say this, running this in the edit, in the table editor appears to cause, what? It appears to create tables of text when in fact it is a table of and when in fact the the note is a, okay, so then I, but then I I dealt with that problem by wrong window. I like if my, my my tablet is on the table, so I'm looking down at the table, but then I can look up here and I'm actually like closer to looking at the camera. It looks a little more natural, plus it doesn't give my neck a cramp. All right, then I've got three copies of the window because I got one on the right hand side showing the live preview, one on the left hand side showing what happens as I fiddle with the uh, with, with the scene in OBS and then then I have to put my cursor back down here. <clears throat> so that's something to work on. So I want a play button that is what I'm getting at tool. So this is synthesizer, edit, copy widgets, edit, paste widgets. That should be, oops. Um, and this is gonna be this, <coughs> excuse me, sequencer. Okay, what I was planning to do and what I might do in like another episode is do some kind of like SFX or stuff. So, this tool called SF, yeah, 8-bit sound maker and generator. This is a JavaScript version of it. Yeah, and so you can hit tone. And the idea is that you can do do things to generate. You, you can tweak these parameters to, to generate a, a tone that is going to, or a, a, a sound that is going to be nice for a video game. And if you click tone here, you actually get exactly what I'm doing right now with the frequency at 440. And then it's all these other things. There's an envelope that like fades in and out and then... I'm not sure what all of these things do, but uh, you can fiddle with these and you get get different sounds. So I might I might do something like that to make like a, synth a, a more a better synthesizer than just clicking on the note. <clears throat> but this is a good start. And then and then also what I want to do is be able to play two notes at once. In theory, you would just be, I guess, adding adding those two sine waves together. But you have to do, take some care to not increase the volume too much. I guess when where they where they overlap because you don't want clipping sounds. Anyway, but, but, but just being able to play a simple melody would be nice. So my, my first synthesizer will just be single notes with sine waves, and which is what we have now. And this sequencer will be just recording what you typed 
single notes, and then we'll put a play button. And then from there, we'll move on to something else in a future episode. So I, I'm going to try and do this new field, new button. So I'm going to put a button here that says play, and I don't want to call it play button. Doesn't matter. Okay. Probably should wait till later to do this. I'm just going to want to edit that script again. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the script to the uh, card itself and just have the mm, the main logic be on the card itself. This is really like legacy stuff. Or I could move this to a different card. This is how you make a new card. That is just widgets. All right, so that still works. And if you turn on this little thing, oops, if you have gestures, you can press that way and go. You just drag left and or swipe left and you get to the now. Turn that off. So I move that to another card and move this over here. And we got this thing. Uh, maybe put this up here for now. I don't know. Let's see. This this interface probably will improve at some point. But let's see what we have. All right. Like maybe we'll draw a piano or something at some point. Because really, this table just needs to be anywhere, and this this data is not going to change once it's once it's done. I could make this a string, or I could generate this using some algorithm. I'm sure there's an algorithm I could use to generate this, or I don't know. Maybe I just do for one C through C4 through C5, and then do a loop to keep that as a string, and then I don't know, we'll figure it out. All right, but for now, for now, what we want to do is, yeah. So what I said I was going to do is so press Control E to edit the card. So on view, I think you can define. Let me just double check this. So let's say E R. Click on this one, and then I'm going to say so let's make a. I think I can make a function local to this whole card, and I would just call it like play note row, right? And then everything else here is going to be cut and saved. And then when I press control E now on play note n, do this and paste that in here. And I think that's it. I think this will work. Let's see. Yes. Okay. So now I only have to press control E. And then all my code is here and I don't need all this stuff here because the code for this is just call this function and I don't need all this uh, x-ray stuff. Okay, let's go ahead and call this click note on, on click note. And we actually will do that here and on and off the click note. And then we're going to refactor this a little bit and call this. Uh, yeah, so add to the sequencer and then we'll say play note. And so let's call this end and then we'll say Play note n, and then on play note n, do that way. Clicking it adds it to the sequencer, and we have this separate separate thing called play note that allows us to play the thing. Oh, we got an expected. We got something wrong. Expected name, but found. Okay. We also don't have any. I guess we can look at the, this masky thing to see what they do about lengths of notes. But I'm not, I'm not gonna mess with that right now because that's that's for another day. I'm just gonna wrap this up. And uh, let's see what uh, what we have here. All right. All right, so let's do twinkle twinkle. It should be how's the misclick? First one was an error. Interesting. The escape. Okay. That's not that shouldn't be triggering the click. I don't think. I'm, I'm double click. I double clicked it. I see. <laughs> double click issues two clicks in a row. Uh, I think that's an error. I think that's something worth talking about with John. So double clicking a grid. Oops. See, double clicking a grid cell triggers the editor, but then also triggers the click event a second time. And so I think that's an error. Ah, that's a bug in, in, in Decker, I think. I, I would call that a bug. It's a UI complaint anyway. OK, so now I want to press this button and have it do something. And I think what I can do, so you, you, can act, you don't have to do, mm, all right, so I, I think what I can do is make a loop, right? And it will just play this whole song. And it will just, I think we have to wait one second in between. Otherwise, it's going to play all the notes at once. We'll see what happens. Actually, that's interesting. You could probably just play all the, you could play a chord that way. Let's see. Let's see if we can say play note three. So if we say play note three and then play note five, yeah, there's a little bit of a delay, but they, but they do, they do play together. Hmm. So be, you would have a little arpeggio if you wanted to play a chord. So what instead you want to do is you want to wait. I think. I think it's wait, maybe sleep. Let's see, wait 1,000 milliseconds. Let's try one just to see the seconds. Nope, not seconds. Wait did not do what I expected to do. I wonder if this, 
I wonder if the if if that sequencing thing actually works the same way when it's let's see when it's in the, in the in the listener. Let's see what happens when you have this. Click to it, it could be that it's not weight. It could be that weight is the wrong word. So I want one indent. One indent is actually kind of nice. But I did two everywhere else. All right, let's try that now. Uh, Got to be a button to toggle between. Them. Yeah, that didn't work. Okay, so let's go back to the Decker notes for sound, which probably is this tab. There is color in Decker. How do you just play Decker? Hmm. Okay. Well, I'll open. I guess this is saved, so we can just open Sound Deck. This is the demo for Decker gestures. Sleep. Sleep play. Okay, that's what we want. All right, so Decker. Recent cards, recent decks would be nice. Open. Uh, this is D. Tangent layout. Decker. So it was sleep, not, not. So now if we go into the listener, and we say, the weight did nothing. That's interesting. So what does weight do? Can I just call anything? Oh, yeah, because it's very, <laughs> it fails silently. So it, one of his ideas is that you want it to be very forgiving. So unfortunately, it's forgiving by failing silently. Right, so we say sleep, play. Now this is going to have a little delay in it because it does take, because that same little delay that we got from running both of them is going to cause a delay, I think, it generates the next note. But let's see. Oh, no, it's not. So it's, that's probably due to the, the interpreters can only run so many instructions on each tick or something. Maybe, I don't know. Okay, so now with, with this, we just have to get, we just need to, to look in the grid and, and look up, so basically look up the, 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 the index. So if we say grid one dot note, grid one, grid one dot, there's a grid, now grid one dot value, grid one dot value dot note. Yes, that's it. Now, if this were K, you could just do this and find the index that way. No, C4 is not the question. So that's not the right operator. Do a search. Let's see what we can do. Oops, down here. So find, this is Decker. I want Will again. Find the index of, index of. I think maybe I can take a diction. I can just cast this into a dictionary somehow. I, I think, okay, so value.note. So I think it's select index, or no, sorry, extract index. Extract index where value equals C4 from grid.value.note. And I think that'll give me the, I think that's what I want. Three, yeah, because there's no C2. The C5 is, is, is in the table, right? Yes, 15. All right, so that's actually good. So that, so we can say on, on get note name do, where value equals name. We call it note. Do. Oh, name. I like name better. I really like to be able to tab by words there. Josh. Name from grid out. Right out. And uh, get note the C4 should give me three. And then D4 should give me four. Five. Right, because there's a C sharp in there. Okay. All right, so now is that is this this thing right here? You see his name is there. So sequence text. Really wish I could press control up or something and do something to get that. Okay, so the little so I want to split a string, okay? And there is a double, like there is a double space right here, so we should see like something. Text. That was a weird way to do it. How do you do a loop? Each or for each x and you know, okay, so each uh, I'm expect uh, in k each is a adverb. So each x in a each c each name in and right? And then we say name. You put the expression in the name. Yeah, so that's it. So that's, that gives it. And how do I filter? Count and you don't take. Yeah, each name and take where value, that's not equal. Not. And I can say one X or, but <laughs> how do you say not? Oh, that's interesting. The question mark can actually be part of the name. We don't have a not operator. Uh, see, appendix one and two, okay. Hyperlink would be handy there since I don't have binary primitives. Logical not is exclamation point. Okay. Where so not where not value equals from no not take. It's select where value. Okay. Now we do want extract. We don't want a table, we want the list. Alright, so extract. Anyway, it's it's get note 
Right. So those are the names of the things, and then let's let's uh, yeah, let's let's just uh, notes. Let's call it notes equals sequence dot text, and we're we'll call this notes. Or we'll call it song melody. Now, uh, song. So that way we can pass it in as a function, right? I'm building up 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 to a function here. All right. So let's call it nums notes. I'll we'll call this names. Put names. Note name. And then each n in notes, each n in notes end play play note n. And that's not what I expected to happen there. Let's see what happened to notes. Notes, okay, so okay, and I'll call this a dictionary. Is it tick.value.value? Because the name is value? It is, isn't it? Expected name but found where? I think I think it remembers this, right? Notes. Notes dot value. So it didn't like me putting in addict as a keyword. Can I do that? Yeah, okay. So I wrapped the whole thing in parentheses and then or sorry, wrapped the whole thing in parentheses and then and say dot value down here. Alright, so now that gives me all the note values and then I just want to so say each oops, oops each I like how you can like write a whole script in this little window. That that's that's interesting. most REPLs don't let you do this. Maybe maybe IPython lets you do it or something. I don't think so. Like a little cell in a notebook, right? Each note in notes. I know just got each n in notes and then end. And so what do we do? Each n in notes. We're going to play note n. And then alright, so I got some thoughts about how to make that better. Alright, so first of all, let's press control E and let's make that thing we just made. We'll put that in a on play song song do. Uh, we'll call it, it's not really a song yet, Na names, not really a song yet, not yet, only, only simple melodies, only, oh, it's not, it is a song, it's just only simple melodies, wow, one note at a time, okay, let's call this Len, I'm just going to hard code 8,000 for now, but Hertz, right, so the Hertz is not, hmm, we need to do a whole calculation here, but, so, the Hertz has got to be like this, so it's got to be, this is right, because that, cause that's like the encoding, right? Yeah, so instead of 8,000, I'm just gonna make it 4,000 what I'm getting at. I, I, got, I, I need to come up with a better encoding for this, so, but this is 8,000 equals one second. And then because it's going on the side, on the, it's looping through the size of S, this shouldn't matter at all. This is still the correct ratio because Hertz is 8,000 samples per second. Now this should be shorter. And then I want it to be a little bit staccato because like when it's playing two, two notes, right? One after another, you, you couldn't hear them. I want to put just one extra sleep, which almost makes me say, okay, then, so yeah, so we don't want to screw up the rhythm. So 3,800, so take 200 out of there. So this should be a half second with a, with a little bit of staccato to it. I don't know, so like a, a little bit of a, you can hear the separation between the notes. A staccato is not the right word. All right, right because that, that, is, <laughs> that isn't what I was doing to make that happen. I was saying, so probably I can just file up the listener and just play this again, and then uh, 200. This is not milliseconds. Sleep is not in milliseconds. It's got to be in seconds. Oh, one frame. Okay, 60 hertz frames. Okay, so it's not it's not seconds. It's frames. Mm-hmm. So 200 frames. So really, I th this can be. Now you're making me do math. All right, we're gonna have to do this. No, two frames. We'll, we'll have to do some math to fix that. This this should just sound better. I can't do a rest in there yet. But yeah, I'd say this is good. This is good enough for today. This is day one. So we've got a sequencer. And uh, so this has to be back in here. So let's press this here, play song. And then we're gonna, on this, we're gonna do action. Nope. On this, we're gonna do a script. And instead of this, we're gonna say play song and put that back. It's called seek, seek.text. And now we do this, this should work. When we do this, this should work. Didn't work. Okay, let's find out why. Play song names. Names is sequence.txt. So this goes away. Ah, split. I need to split it. No. Okay, I know what's going on. I, I need to put... It is expecting a string, right? <coughs> no. Names. Yeah. That is expecting a string. Okay, so now... I didn't... Just double check. In names. Names of notes. Simple song. Alright. So... This, I believe, now should just be sequence.txt. Or we can, we can just put anything we want here. C4, C4. 
two notes. Play song. Did I call this play song in here? I didn't call it that here. No, oh, so I did need to split. All right. Do I need this in parent? I don't think so. No, because each name in split. Something screwed up here when I. What am I doing wrong? Simple song. All right. Play song, simple song. So that should just be the text. So this is definitely wrong. This should. Why is this not working? Okay. Just double check. We still have sound, right? C4, everything. Yeah, okay. I've done something like really stupid, like a typo or something. And then uh, four. All right, let's refactor this a little bit. On get notes, simple song to. Okay, so C4, C4. Okay. But if I say play notes. Oh, I, don't, I didn't make that a separate song. I didn't make that a separate thing that I can call. I don't see why that's failing. Maybe John has seen my error, but right, so like that that's where the problem is. I said now play notes three five, right? So that's like, yeah, that works fine. <clears throat> that's not C4 and D4, but where is it? Yeah, C4. And and then that should be D4. So why is this failing? Get note simple song. Get note C4. That still works, right? Yeah, that works. So somehow that this is this is failing. Simple song. One, two, three. Yeah, that's it. Okay. I could have sworn. What did I do to break to break this? Names equals this. Each name in names get note name. Man. I wonder if it's I wonder if it's like that because I broke it in half. All right, let's let's just edit this. Three five. That did work. All right, I've got a, a spelling error. That's what it has. This spelling sign. Get notes. Simple song. I feel feel like I might have named the thing in this local in the interpreter's local space. Get notes. Get notes. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna say on get notes. Simple song. Do button on dot text equals simple song. And and now when I play, it's gonna turn into that. No. Hey, Green Jenny. I don't know. I don't know if there's going to be a J-powered hypercard. I think I'm pretty happy with Lil here. Uh, I saw the amount of work John Ernest put into making this thing. I have no, no desire to replicate it. The language Lil is actually an array language, so it's it's very scaled down, beginner friendly array language. Not not anything on the complexity of J or even K. But I just wish I knew what was going on here. Hmm. I was expecting to wrap this up, and now it's like, whoa, what the heck? Play notes, notes, okay? We know this works, I tested this. But get notes is, get, some, get notes is returning an empty, I, I feel like something is screwed up here. And I don't, it's, it's either I can't compose, no, I just, I don't, I don't have any idea. Because I ran this code and it produced the result I expected. Produced 3.5, simple song. I'm almost wondering if I can't put like, what's it called? No, not this. Button one text is got here. I, I almost am starting to feel like it's this. The comment. Like it. Alright, so I call that get notes without the two, so I got rid of the two, so that it should be here now. Alright. Get notes C4 D4. I'm expecting nothing to happen, but I'm expecting this to say got here. Uh, what? Oh, okay, well something is failing. And it's like stopping. Let's put got here one. Got here two, got here three, got here four. <laughs> I can't see what it says. Come on now. Got here four. Let's see what the name says. First of all, let's start with simple song. So it got here, so let's see what, what happens when we press this button. We should get simple song. We should get the whole, oh, sorry. We should get the whole text. Yeah, the whole thing. Okay. All right, so that should, using name should give me this, delete this, put some way. I should say this, this should, yeah. All right, so that concatenated the strings in that list, because it's a list, okay? The names is correct. Get new name. Oh, where did get no go? That's what happened. Okay. Yeah, this is gonna play fives. <laughs> wow, that's sad. Right, if I had checked that into version control, I would've been able to diff it, so that's, that's, that's some trouble. All right, do I have the code for, no, I don't have it anymore. I just have to rebuild that. Extract index from grid one dot 
value where note equals note note goes over here. Extract where extract index where note equals c4 from grid dot one value. Yeah, that's it. So that's actually it's actually pretty nice. I have no idea. Mm, come on now. I also wish double clicking would select the whole line. Where note equals name from okay. Okay. That should play three notes. Why is it only playing two notes? A4, B4, D4. Alright, let's try this again. This should say 3-5 right now. Get notes. C4, D4. Get note. C4. Did I lose it again somehow? No? Get notes. Simple song. Let's put this back to the word play. Not this one. This one should set it back to the word play now. Should set this to the word play. Is it A4 that's broken? Nope. Alright, let's do split A B. Alright, so that yeah, oh, that should give me each one. Is that like a yeah, okay, so I can say print just print to this console. Which means instead of all this debug stuff, I can just say print. Fact we're not value from each name in names, get note name. From each name in names. Is that place on or where where ah, come on. Get note should print the names. What why does that keep happening? I must be pressing something. Okay, so because get notes is still five, isn't it? How do you stop? Decker, file, new deck. Nope. Decker, quit. In that, so I don't. I have two of them going. This one, and then bring it down to the other window so you guys can see it. Burr. Where was it? Tangent code, right? Tangent labs. Decker. Hopefully, this all. That's interesting. Moved to a different screen when I opened it. Okay. It didn't print anything. Come on. What? Are, this is play song. Sequence.txt. Okay. This was just working a minute ago. The, the concern is that possibly A4 is broken. Yeah, okay. Got note A4. Zero, okay. Zero, zero, right? Hmm, interesting. Oops, that's not what I meant. I, I, I think this works except for that particular note. All right, so then the only remaining question is why is that one not working? All right, so let's do this equals A4. It should be zero, right? Get notes. What does get notes do that is screwing it up? Wait, does zero equal a... I should use the match operator here. Now, so now the bug is... Now there's one less, last bug, which is this. You can't play a single note. And there's a quick hack for that, which is just... Uh, somehow I'm getting back something. I think that's what's happening. So get notes A4 is going to give me back... If I say C4, that's... So if I say list... Well, now I, need, I want to force it to be a list. C4, C4 is going to be... 3, comma 3, see if that works. This is how you would do it in K, probably. Yeah. So get notes should return. That still works. That works. Okay. So that's our sequencer. Did I explain what that note was? I was probably just zoning out. So, yeah. So the idea was to make sure this is... Yeah, I, I typed it. So this is forcing it to be a list, even if only one note was given. So I don't need to print this. This actually didn't print out in the console, did it? Okay, so print only does not work like as a debugging tool, as far as I can tell. All right, All right so we'll call this little mini sequencer. Sequencer card. Sequencer. Uh, mini synthesizer. And sequencer. Sure. All right, so that's step one. And I guess I'm going to call this a night. So I'm going to check this into Git, and this will be up on... I'll just check it in right now. It will be up on uh, GitHub on my Tangent Labs repository. So down here, the password is... So I probably shouldn't uh, directory. Let's see what Decker saved for us here. Okay, so that's the font we built, we, that, that we imported. That's the sounds that we I recorded earlier with all the piano sounds on that second card. Mm -hmm. And then yeah, now there's the code. So it's all it's just a text little it's a little text format. Pretty easy to parse. These are just strings. It's almost very similar to JSON, but not quite JSON. So the Decker is pretty pretty editable or whatever. All right, so I'm gonna let's see initial. Okay, and push. Probably just gonna ask me for a password. I have no idea what my password is. Okay, I actually do have some idea what my password is, but it's not accepting it. So I will check this in, and it'll be it'll be here after I figure out where it is. So the uh, come on. Oh, am I on? No, my keyboard was screwed up. That's not it. Okay, Tangent Storm Tangent Labs, and there'll be a directory called Decker here, and then I believe it's not. It's not. That's baffling to me.
I don't type it in that often, but that should be my password. All right, so something straight up. Okay. Anyway, so yeah, so just as a quick recap at the end here, we've got a table or a grid that contains the this column right here, which is the important column. From that, this this column is only used to sort the table. When I click on it, it triggers a script because when you press Control Control R, click on here. Come on. Oh, that's interesting. When you click here, yeah, it says click note row, and then in the that calls get the sequence text, append the sequencer. Sorry, close the top. It appends the note that we just clicked on by taking the row number and grabbing the note column. That gives us the text. We append that to the sequencer, and then strip off any white space at the start. And then we play the note. Okay, so when we play the note, this is the sample code that we got modified to use that formula, this formula to do the scale, the the, the Tempered scale or whatever it's called, the, the, the piano's, maybe that's not the right word, but the piano's 12-step approximation of, of the actual scale, and then we play it. All right, so then when we press the play song button, or rather the, the button one, we, it says play song, given the text of this thing. And so then it follows play song, which takes a string, you get the notes of it, and then play those notes. So get the notes, split it on the space character. For each one of those, we get the name and filter out anything that's empty. So anything that's an invalid character or double space or whatever like that, an invalid name. And then map those to numbers and then force it to be a list, return that list. And now we pass it to play notes, which just loops through and plays each note with a slight two frame delay. So we get this little staccato sound to it. So you can hear the distinction between or the separation between the two notes. And that's it. That's it. I probably could have fix this a little bit that this is to do is to go ahead and really work out the timing because this is not the right way to do that. We should make this 8,000 and then strip off a little bit at the end or whatever if, if you want staccato, if you want it to be staccato. Otherwise, it's going to blend into each other. We have volume here. That was, and the future work would be to, to do some of the SFX or stuff, the sound effects stuff, so we can work on the envelope of these notes uh, and, and try and change the sound a little bit so it's not just a pure thing. And then, of course, to be able to combine two of these notes together and, and get polyphonic sounds. So like two, two notes playing at once, or multiple notes playing at once. But I've taken several hours on this. I don't know how long I've been recording, but it's been quite a while. So for those of you still watching or who watched any part of this, thank you very much. I will put a much simpler version of the, or like a, a stripped down version of this on YouTube. I might do that tonight. I might stick this in the editor and have it strip out all the long pauses and whatnot. And, or maybe even just upload it because John wants. I talk. I'm talking to John tomorrow afternoon, so maybe he'll have a chance to, to watch this if I if I strip it down and make it short enough. Then he'll get some feedback on this. We can have a better conversation. But for those of you who missed it at the start, this is Decker, which I believe is linked in the description. But it's beyondloom.com. Decker, it's a lot. It's a massive, excellent manual. Clicking on the wrong thing yet again. Come on. Here's the main page, Beyond Loom Decker, and then there is this uh, to go the itch.io thing. So the itch.io forward slash jam forward slash decktember is uh, what I'm doing right now. So hopefully my name is in here somewhere. Not. And it's just something to do in the month of December and uh, to try it out. If you try it, let me know what, what you would you come up with or enter this contest and maybe we'll, I'll see you. And uh, I will, I guess if I have time, I'm going to continue working on this. This is a for fun project. Obviously, I have something I could submit right now. I may do that if I don't have another chance to work on it, but uh, hopefully I will and we can make it better. All right. See you when I see you. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.